Are you a passionate photographer but feels some charm is missing in your photo and the viewers don't pay that much of attention that you want? Well, perhaps you have to level up your game of composition. Hello guys, welcome to my channel and in this video I am going to talk about one of the most important aspects of any genre of photography which is composition. So what is composition? It is the arrangement of all the elements that are present in your photo. It directly affects what you want your image to say and how well it is conveyed. So no matter how perfect your photo is in terms of technicalities, if the composition isn't right, your photo will lose all of its charm eventually. So in this video, which is a part one of this topic, I am going to show you how to compose your image and what things you have to keep in mind before composing an image in five rules. So without any further ado, let's get started. Rule number one, the rule of thirds. It is the most basic and well-known rule of all. Rule of thirds are the magical lines that divide an image into nine equal parts using two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. And we should always place the most important components, which is our subject, on any of the intersections of these lines. Here you can see a photo which I clicked at Mangalajuri wetlands of Orisha. Two egrets are fighting over territories and being our subjects, we place them on top left intersection point. As per the rule, this makes the composition stronger than simply placing the subjects in the center. Here is another photo of ruddy shell dog resting peacefully on Tista riverbed. See how the riverbed is on the top horizontal line having a subject on another intersection. Now what if we shift our subject to this intersection point? Not so pleasing composition as previous one, right? For that we have our rule number 2, leaving space in the correct direction. Now what is the correct direction? The direction which your subject is looking or moving towards. And by giving space in that direction, you are giving your viewers more context. So whenever taking photos of an animal or bird, try to leave space ahead of them. So taking the previous example where the bird is looking to the left, it will be definitely a better composition if we leave enough space in the left rather than right. Here's another example of the beautiful Indian paradise like a charmel heading diagonally in the frame. And we made this composition looks visually appealing by simply keeping space ahead of him. Rule number three, always watch your background. Several times when we get into the field and at the moment we spot our subject, we get so excited that we just pick our camera and start clicking. And in that process, we completely ignore our background, which can be just as important as the subject while composing the image. And if the background has any kind of distracting elements, it can greatly hamper the final image by drawing the viewer's attention away from the subject. It can be a stick, a branch or any overexposed part or any kind of distracting element that divides attention. So pre-visualize and look for such background which must not compete with the subject before pressing the shutter. In this photo, we can see the restless beauty fantail is resting on a dried banana leaf. But tell me, what's the thing that caught your eye first? I bet it's not the fantail but the overexposed white spots. And these patches along with the black patches made this image look completely messy and unusable. Now compare this photo with this photo. Better, right? And all I had to do is to wait patiently for the bird to come and sit on a different perch against a better background. Now take example number 2. An adorable ferruginous flycatcher from the Himalayas is sitting against a beautiful background. But look at the right side. 
A broken branch more than thrice of the bird size is driving our attention towards it away from the subject. So what I did in this case is to change my shooting angle a bit. And look what I got. A photo pleasing to the eye. Rule number 4. Keep room around the subject. Tightly framed or cropped images is another common mistake in beginners. This makes the subject appear suffocated and the image look unpleasant. So along with leaving space ahead of subject, as I told in the previous rule, keep a little space around the subject. And in doing so, you let the audience imagine the subject's behavior or action, which creates a connection between the image and its audience. Now for the sake of demonstration, if we have a photo of Brahminikite cropped this way, see by yourself how suffocating the photo looks. Now if we keep more room around our subject to give the bird more space for its flight, this leaves the viewer to visualize the action in its habitat. Here's another attempt to tightly crop this frame of this vibrant cotton pygmy goose. But we can hardly deliver the context of this photo to viewers. Instead of this cropping, if we keep more room around our subject, not only our photo has become breathable, but also it provides context, where the viewers can see the bird just taking off, splashing water all around. Rule number 5. Avoiding chopping of the body parts. So body parts are cut off when you get too close to the subject or if the images are poorly cropped. And this leaves the subject looking unattractive and something missed out. Allow me to demonstrate with a photo of Malayan giant squirrel taking a nap. Everything is perfect in this photo except that one centimeter of tail that I chopped off accidentally while cropping and the photo became incomplete. So I make it right by including that small portion of tail. Here's again a photo of Ygrit with its wings open. And just like before, the tiny amount of wing that had been chopped off made this image look not so graceful. So we have to make sure that we don't clip off any part of our subject either in camera composition or in post-processing. Here's an important point. We often come across a situation where the subject is partially hidden behind the foliage, making the lower part of the body invisible. Invariably, we forget and lose track of their feet while shooting, cutting out this essential element, which is a big no. So when I saw this Indian rhino behind the grasses in Kaziranga National Park, I framed it to ensure I had enough space at the bottom to let the viewer sense the location of its feet. And this rule is applied in different environments too. For example, in this case, the lower portion of this little ringed clover became invisible due to the mud and pebbles of foreground. And instead of cropping, we include that portion, although it is invisible, for better composition. Here's another note. Intentional cuts of the subject for close-up or creative purposes is completely fine. Like I did in this image to showcase the vibrant pectoral tuft of this male purple sunbird. These are the 5 tips for today and there will be a part 2 video of this topic. I hope you guys found this video helpful and if you enjoyed learning with me, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. See you soon with a brand new video. Till then, stay happy, stay kind and stay positive. Bye.